All right, here's your impulse momentum theorem uh, example problem. Uh, show you to do some calculations with the impulse momentum theorem. Uh, a one kilogram water balloon is your problem was tossed through the air to a partner with a velocity of 10 meters per second. So like we did in class, we're going to do uh, giving with the balloon as you catch it and not giving with it and keeping your hands rigid, right? So in letter A, you keep your hands rigid. There's no give. Um, and the partner stops the balloon quickly in a tenth of a second, right? But in situation B, you give with it while you catch it, and the partner uses one whole second to stop the balloon. So these are your contact times given based on, uh, ha, given based on whether you uh, keep your hands rigid or you give with uh, the balloon. And in the problem up here, they give the mass of the balloon and the velocity it's thrown at. So let's see our problem. Keep that just to the side. So in our problem, we're going to just calculate four different things, right? Uh, first, we're going to calculate the force used to stop the balloon uh, in, in letter A, where there's no give, right? So um, write down the whole problem from before in your notebook that you could use as a reference while I put this to the side. Um, and then you could do letter A. Alright, so here's our impulse momentum theorem, FT equals M delta V. We're just going to write that out. Left side is called impulse, and the right side is called change in momentum, right? And we want to calculate uh, the force used to stop the balloon with no give, right? Um, Alright, so what, what did we know in the problem? We knew the mass of the balloon is a kilogram it's a uh, velocity it was thrown with that's initial velocity is 10 meters per second right uh, its final velocity uh, is after it is stopped because there's no give the contact time is 0.1 seconds so before the contact time it was going 10 meters per second and after the contact time its final velocity uh, is zero. Um, all right, so uh, how are we going to calculate force? So we could say F times 0.1 seconds on the left side equals mass times it's always VF minus VI, right? So, so just bring that down. Mass is a kilogram. And then we got VF, 0, minus VI, 10. And you could see on the right side that M times delta V works out to be a negative, negative 10. And the unit there is meters per second. So negative 10 kilogram meters per second. That's the change in momentum of the balloon as it's caught is a negative because it loses momentum when it's stopped. So that's how much momentum the hand of the partner takes away from the balloon when they catch it. Now we got to calculate the force used to stop it. So there's really only one more step here, right? Um, if we divide both sides by the contact time, 0.1 seconds, right over there, then we'll get the force used to stop it. So negative 10 divided by 0.1 is negative 100. Why negative force used to stop it? Well, because it's used to slow it down. That's why the force is negative. Negative 100 newtons. Good. Large force used with a small contact time. Uh, calculate the force stop the balloon in B with a give. So really it's going to be everything is the same as before. Just going to write, you know, bring that down bring that down except the only given that is going to change uh, when when we give with them we don't hold our hands rigid is the T will be different now it's a longer contact time of a whole second remember when we give with the balloon right so F times one second the ball still comes in I mean the balloon still comes in with the same mass and the same 
it ends up at the same VF of zero. And it still has the same VI coming in. So when you multiply those together, it ends up with the same loss in momentum. It starts with the same momentum when it hits the person's hands. When they stop it, it has no momentum. So it still um, loses the same amount of momentum as before. It's just done in a different way over a longer period of time. Um, so bring that down. And you basically divide both sides by one, which means nothing really happens. So the force is this time negative 10 newtons used to stop the balloon. All right, so when there was a no give, it was more force. When there was a give, there was 10 times less force. 100 it goes down to 10. Um, so 10 times more contact time gave us 10 times smaller force. All right, now we're going to calculate the impulse used to stop the balloon in A. So we know impulse is the whole uh, left side of the theorem which is force times time, right? So, what does it say in A? I should say no give. That's when we're getting the impulse, when there's no give. So the force in A, when there is no give, is negative 100 newtons times 0.1 seconds. And that works out to negative 10. What's the units? Newtons and seconds. So those combine to make newton seconds. And that's your unit for impulse. Newton seconds, right? So negative 10. Uh, it seems like there was an easier way to get that. Maybe that number has shown up before. Uh, instead of multiplying the force and the time from no give, which was negative 100, right? and just 0.1 seconds, uh, it's, we could have just said, you know, impulse, bring this back from your previous notes, impulse equals change in momentum. So if we knew the whole right side of the equation, which we had known uh, already is negative 10, then that's just equal to the whole left side of the equation. So if we knew uh, delta P on the right side here is negative 10, we knew the impulse was going to be negative 10 anyway. And we could have used that to get it instead of calculating it. Um, so let's calculate the impulse again with uh, giving with the balloon. Impulse equals FT. Here I'm going to plug in my F and my T. So this is from situation B, where there is a give, therefore my force is negative 10 newtons, and my time is a whole second, and negative 10 times 1 is just negative 10. Huh. Now the interesting result here is that give and no, uh, give and no give, whether you hold your hands rigid or you give when you catch the balloon, gives you the same impulse. It doesn't change the amount of impulse needed to stop the balloon. And the reason is whether you hold your hands rigid or you give, the ball comes in with 10 kgm over s of momentum. doesn't matter. Uh, giving with it doesn't change the momentum that the ball comes in with, so it doesn't change the amount of impulse needed to stop it. Uh, what it does do is when there's more when you give with it you reduce the force but you increase the time when you hold your hands rigid here there's less time of contact but there's more force but they still multiply to make the same impulse because the ball came in with the same momentum